thanks for inviting me. Uh, I wanted to begin my talk with a very interesting incident. Uh, yeah, so I had gone to Florence for a film festival and one evening I went out to click some pictures. And I got so carried away that around two to three hours later I realized that I was in the middle of nowhere and it was completely dark. So I looked towards my left, I looked towards my right and it was vast expanse of darkness. I couldn't spot a soul. So what I did was I went to an elevated area and far away to, towards my right side I could see a lamppost. So I thought let me start walking to the lamppost and from there I'll figure out my future strategy. So I started walking towards the, uh, the lamppost and as I was approaching the lamppost, a very interesting thought crossed my, uh, crossed my mind. What I felt was we live each day of our life, one day after another, thinking that we are getting somewhere. There's a sense of progression, right? And so I felt in our life also, there's a sort of a lamppost. Not a clear lamppost, but a sort of a hazy lamppost, but it, it is giving us some sense of direction. So in today's talk, I just wanted to discuss this. What is this lamppost? And why do we walk? So 10 years ago, I was like most of you people. I was a student at IIT. And uh, my life revolved around data structures, file systems, recursive programs. I moved to Microsoft. I got a job there. And uh, one day, I got an award from which I bought myself a camera. Now, there's one thing also about me that since childhood, I used to sort of live in my own world. Uh, I used to write stories. I used to write poems. I used to make sketches. And I didn't have a formal training, so I used to observe my own hand and feet, and I used to uh, do all my drawings. So uh, when I got my camera and I made my initial few films, what I realized was there were things and there were ideas and thoughts that, that I couldn't speak, that I couldn't write, but, but I could express them through my film. So there was this sudden joy of discovering a new medium of expression. And I wanted to explore that further. So what I did was I quit my job. I moved to India and I took up a course in filmmaking. Now for me the interesting part starts here because uh, around three to four months into my course we were asked to make a film and I wanted to make a good film, really good film because now I was doing this full time, right? So it had my undivided attention. So what is a good film? For me a good film is something that touches something really deep in your heart. You know when you see a good film you feel like telling your friends go watch it and why because just the sheer power of experience of seeing this film makes you, feel, makes you feel like you own that film. So I thought when I'll make my film, it will be something like that. So I went, I wrote the script, uh, I shot the film. I remember I carried the film in a USB and I remember that evening very clearly. I got the pen drive at my home and I was watching my film on a laptop. And as I was watching that film, a very deep sense of despair entered me, you know, because Forget about my film being liked by other people. In my own private heart, I thought it was not a good film. And I remember I was having this uh, discussion with my husband. I was having this discussion with my friend because I was really nervous. Like, okay, it's great. I've left my high paying job to do something I'm very passionate about. But what if I turn out to be a bad filmmaker? And I got the usual advice that you've just started. Give yourself more time. And like, you know, some of my friends said, you can always go back to do what you're doing because you were doing so well. But I didn't want to go back to doing that thing. But I was very nervous. I didn't know what to do. I was unsure of myself. So the logical thing I thought was to try to make one more film. And this time I had around six months with me. And uh, I remember the six months, I call that phase sort of like a dark age of my life because I actually shut myself in my house. I would, I would try to think, I would try to write. I would watch a lot of films. I would make a lot of, uh, I watch a lot of films, re read a lot of books. And in that process, actually what happened was I started spending time with myself. And in that process, I discovered a few things about myself. One of the things that I discovered was I loved the work of this artist school Mithis. And I really loved the use of play, play of bold colors. That is one of, this, 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 these are just examples. But one of the other things that I realized was since childhood, the kind of stories that really, really attracted me were the fable, the fantasy kind of stories, sort of like science fiction kind of stories. So I started putting all the things that I like into my film. And at the end of those six months, I went ahead and shot my film. I remember that date, it was August 19, uh, 2009, when I finished completing uh, the film. I remember the date because I blogged about it. Uh, and I'm going to read out the blog verbatim. 
and it says uh, shot my film today and this post is to bookmark the great feeling i'm having as if i have got what i wanted in life as if i'm ready to die and the funny part is that i haven't yet seen the movie but for today i'll free myself from all the worries of the results and allow myself to derive the pleasure of indulging into a beautiful process of creation it's not just pleasure it's a high i wonder if people who have drugs feel this way so now you know i don't have drugs <laughs> So it's one at night. I'm alone. It's just me and the process of creation with me, and it feels great. It feels wonderful. I wonder if every moment of my life would be aimed at experiencing these brief moments, these wonderful nights. I wish they would be. And I still feel today when I read that this blog post is still an understatement of the high I was feeling. I mean, if today, and I'm not joking, somebody gives me one million dollars, I don't know if I'll feel the same happiness I felt that night. And I just made a super short film, like, but I was feeling such a huge high. and you know why i was feeling that high i was feeling that high because i could express myself completely in a form that i could share with people and that is the central thing i want to talk about you know ralph waldo emerson says a man is only half himself and other half is his expression i feel lot of time we go about our life hardly expressing ourselves or only half expressing ourselves we don't see our work as an alternative representation of ourselves i feel our work is like work should contain our dna a work should be a ghost a ghost that kind of covers the gap between us and our understanding of the world you know i feel that this whole universe is trying to articulate itself into a story and we try to contain ourselves too much within ourselves this is my name this is my body like i see a lot of small packets of people but what is required is somewhere somebody should be able to you know puncture a membrane so that we can pour ourselves completely into the work we do and this is not just limited to film making this is regardless of work we do you know you should be able to channelize all your faculties completely into your day to day work and when i say this i understand what is the big question here the big question is lot of people don't find that motivation you know how do you find that motivation to give your 100% to your work and i feel you find that motivation if you try to attach your work to a larger meaning if you try to see how your work is affecting people around you or even people away from you like for example you are a musician you your work touches so many people all over the world so you have to try to attach that meaning to your work but for that what you have to do is you have to be a very attentive listener and this is the second thing i want to talk about is a person who expresses himself fully cannot avoid being an attentive listener You know, for me, it's very wrong to assume that any story that I'm telling, regardless of how sci-fi or how wacky it is, that it's completely originating within me. Most of the time, the issues, the emotions, the stories are already all out there, and basically, they're affecting me and they're impacting me in a way that I'm feeling the need need to externalize them or interpret them via my work. Just like you know, air, food, uh, energy. I think even ideas are recycled. like we take in ideas from the world we kind of process it and then we share it with the world um you know neuroscience uh, even neuroscience says that more you expose yourself to newer ideas more you expose yourself to newer skill set the more evolved you become and the more uh, it enhances your cognitive capabilities you know so in my job in my job as a storyteller or in my job even as a person i try to have an approach of explorer as a traveler so i try to travel a lot i try to open myself to new experiences i try to acquire new skills every pa passing day i try to open myself to new point of views i try to read articles from other fields really alien fields but i try to know how those those fields work and all that helps me grow now uh, i also have a very essential thing about knowledge i feel knowledge is like a mirror it's like the most crystal clear mirror because a knowledge really helps you see who you are and knowledge for me because maybe i'm a fantasy writer also think knowledge is like a time machine it helps you see what you can become and it helps you become what you want to become and acquiring knowledge is very simple all you have to do is listen because this whole world is brimming with stories is brimming with ideas and you just have to tune in now this one more thing i want to talk about and uh, so we spoke about expressing ourselves completely we i spoke about acquiring knowledge 
the third thing I want to talk about, which is the inevitable struggle. Uh, Woody Allen, who is one of my favorite filmmakers, he said there are two kinds of people. They're horrible and miserable. So, you know, this guy here is miserable, so am I. Like, but you, you see any work that's worth being mentioned, whether it's like climbing the Mount Everest or, you know, discovering Higgs boson, or even the i force that we carry in our hand. Like, the people who have worked on these extremely complex problems have actually struggled very hard. You know, no one has escaped struggle. Everybody had to work hard. Um, my, uh, since I was a computer science student, my data structure uh, teacher had a very interesting thing to say about software. He said, nothing is automatic. You have to write the damn code. I think that's true for life also. Nothing is automatic. There's no free ride. You have to work hard to become the person you want to become. You have to work hard to express the things you want to express. You know, I'll give you a very classic example. We've all heard of Michelangelo. Uh, has anyone been to Michelangelo's house? So his house has, of course, been converted into a museum. Uh, in his house, you'll see a lot of his old paintings and old sketches. And uh, in, uh, when I saw his sketches, some of the sketches contained burn marks. So somebody actually tried to burn uh, all his earlier work. Now, who could that person be? Right? Turns out it was Michelangelo himself who wanted to burn all his earlier work because he didn't want people to see how much he had to struggle, how much he had to work hard, and how much he had to practice to become the person who painted the Sistine Chapel. So even Michelangelo couldn't escape struggle. And you know, just like the way Michelangelo represents human race, I think each of you, like you know, every person out there, even I myself, I represent the human race. And similarly, everything that the human race represents will be intricately woven in my mental texture. So when I'll be, try to do something new, I will be nervous, you know, I'll be unsure. I'll, I'll, be, I'll feel like giving up. I'll have to navigate the river of uncertainty. But, and I don't know if I have natural talent. But the thing is, I don't know even if Michelangelo had natural talent. But because I'm a member of the human race, I have ability to work hard, I have willpower, and above all, I have grit to get what I want. And uh, yeah, on this, I want to say that physics has a very interesting thing to say about grit. You know, what physics says, a single particle has the energy to fire up the entire universe. So imagine we are like brimming with, like we have millions of particles within us. So I think we can really get if some things we want to get it. So what I want to say is struggle is something that is not bad. Struggle is actually good because struggle means you're actually living. It means you're growing, you're moving forward. You are kind of expanding the boundaries of human endurance and human excellence. So all that struggle, all that hard work will actually bleed into your work and it will enhance your happiness. So and now I want to come back to our uh, first slide. What I want to propose that this lamp that we are walking towards is actually not outside us. It's actually inside us. And there's not just one lamp, there are multiple lamps. And what are these lamps? So these lamps are our urges of self-expression. They are our internaliz internalization of the world. And as we move forward in our life, what happens, sorry. Yeah, okay. We actually keep sharing these lamps with the world and in the process we start, we derive happiness. And what happens when we die? When we die, these lamps continue to float around in the universe, just like tiny fireflies. So happiness for me is like, uh, is actually, I believe happiness is self-expression. That's it, thanks.